And hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We're sitting here in Hanoi. <clears throat> we're sitting here in Hanoi, Vietnam. And we're doing it at night. Well, it's getting towards dawn. I think it's what? Oh, I want to say like 5 a.m. local. I want to say it's about a 12 hour offset. And the good news is, in the amount of time it's taken for us to start the stream, I can actually see my uh, controls, which I couldn't do when we first booted up. But, let's get this bird off the ground. There are a few issues that we'll see with the, the, uh, with the scenery. One of which is all these static aircraft. I do not like all the static aircraft that these developers are putting in. Um, it's like they're just trying to make it look more finished, look more active, but it's, it's just, it gets in the way, it uses up stands that we could use for realistic aircraft. Uh, another thing is, I'm gonna pop out here in my camera real quick, jump up real, real nice and high, now that you can probably see it. Okay, so you'll see on these taxiways here. That is not centered, and in fact, on some of these, it even goes out into the grass. See here? Now the thing is, this is th these markings are not even on the actual uh, taxiways in Hanoi. I checked satellite photos, and there are no markings that say runway ahead. So. Uh, the developer just decided to throw them on there and throw them on there badly. And the reason why I think they're bad is because um, the developer didn't actually put the taxiways or the runway down. They just put the markings and some dirt and stuff to make it look more used. I understand why. It was a very cheap, quick and easy fix. But it means that you can't really see the taxiways and runways and such when you're developing the, the scenery. So uh, the fact that you can't see it means that you're not always going to be lined up. And, and I think if they would have at least looked at it in the actual simulator, they would have seen that that wasn't correct and moved it. However, let's go ahead and get this thing started, shall we? Um... Let's start with batteries one and two on. Ground control. External power. Fuel pumps all off. Fuel load. Okay, so this is where I need my flight plan and my TOLUS menu. I love TOLUS. I, I still, for, for whatever problems they may have had, I, I love TOLUS. Uh, we're going to go with block fuel is 7554, so we're going to go with 76. And then our loading today, 136 passengers. And then two tons of cargo. Let's see if we can adjust this. Let's adjust it forward a little bit, get about 30%. Alright. So that's our loading and fuel done. Next up is a few fire tests. And that's a good APU fire test. So master switch on. And we're going to start turning these up. Now, the second one should be weather. I've learned a few things. Flap open. And start that APU. Actually, we don't have to wait for the flap open message. Apparently, we have to wait 30 seconds. And then we can start the APU. Um, how 
however, it's it's just as easy for me to just wait. It's no big deal. We have plenty of things to do. Alright. Part of Blondie, thank you so much for that host hitting that button and uh, sharing out the stream. It definitely does help us in the uh, algorithms and get us up the the uh, hoppers, so I appreciate it so much. I really do. All right. Um, cockpit lights and McDo's map, uh, flap lever, speed brake retracted, uh, probe and window heat auto, APU bleed on, air conditioning panel, no white, cross bleed set to auto, landing elevation set auto, Air conditioner temp as required. We're not really going to worry about it. Actually, we may actually need high today. Uh, electrical panel, exter external power off. Electrical panel all white off. Ventilation. The world's most awesome wifey is here. Yes, she is. Thank you so much for dropping by wifey. So we are in Hanoi right now. We're going to be heading to Hong Kong. Let's get our deers on to nav. Trying to do things a little bit more appropriate to real world as far as Tolis is concerned anyway. Perfect. All right. The deers are set to uh, strobe light auto. Wing lights on, nav and logo system one, seat belts on, no smoking to auto, emergency exit lights armed, pack flow we've already set, fuel pumps all on. We're gonna engine test one and two. Radios three, two and one. Stop the head bob. And then we are on to McDo configuration. Okay, so we're going to use both McDo's today because I have learned a little bit about a little bit. So we're going from VBNB to VHHH. Flight number is... Let's see. All right, now we need to data GPS monitor. Twenty one thirteen two. So no, we need to be twenty one twelve nine. And our horizontal position, 105.48.5. Today's cost index is going to be 60. A whopping 60. Go ahead and align our IRS. We'll be done needing that. Cruise flight level today is going to be... 1130, it's going to be flight level 370, I believe. Yeah, 370. Alright, now we've set our flight plan. We are going to be departing from runway 29 right via Haka 2 Bravo. No transition.
Okay, now I need my flight planning. Okay, so from Naka, if I can just airways straight. Romeo 474. I can. Alright, perfect. Yeah. I yeah. Alpha 599. Oh. And then we're going Romeo 473. Sierra. Insert. And then from Sierra, we're going to board. Broca. Kento. Uh, North 21, East 113. Murray. Hunt. Then a jump on our arrival. We're going to be coming in for one way two five, right? I'm going to need to fix something here. LS25 right via Canto to Bravo. And there's one. Insert. The one thing I need to fix is I put us on the wrong runway. Archer is going to be via, via 11 right. Yes, yes, 11 right. Still Haka to Alpha. Perfect. Now let's make sure that's got my full route, which it does. have an alternate and the MMs about the alternate because we're not going to use it okay the flight plan is set secondary flight plan we don't need because uh we're not flying with atc so there's no chance we'll be shunted to a different runway or a different uh departure i'm gonna go back and do init b for which i need my tolos plugin Angel, thank you so, so much for that subscription, wifey. I appreciate it so, so much. Everything that you spend here today goes back into the channel. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some uh, tools here coming up. We do have a, um, a payout coming up soon, I think. 56.4 and 30.5%. Block fuel is 7.6. And I think you'll appreciate this this way of saying thank you, wifey. Come try ya. Uh, 
Okay, so that's init B done. Performance. We're going to use a flaps to departure. V1 150. V rotate 150. V2 153. Flaps is going to be 2 slash down. 0 0.3. Flex temp is 58 degrees. Colonel O'Neill Jack for crying out loud. <laughs> Alright, and progress. We're going to the HHH. Victor Triple Hotel. Alright. All right, that's our MCDU configured. We're ready for pushback and start. Altimeter needs to be set, which means we need to get our altimeter. Let's listen in here. This is NOI by INTL Information Whiskey. 2221 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 2 in. Dew point 25. Wind 120 and 5. Altimeter 1007. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. From zero zero this is seven. by INTL information whiskey. All right, flight directors are both on. FCU speed and heading are both dashed. I'm not looking up real world procedures for this. Um, it's uh, Southeast Asia is real weird on how uh, their procedures look. So, I haven't had time to study this, but I did fly it um, the other day, just as a, as a test. So we should be fine. I'm just going to go ahead and set 37,000 feet cleared. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right. Um, Anti-skid nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder set squawk. Beacon on and then we don't actually need a push back here because i can just join the taxiway this way so we're just gonna give ourselves clearance to start our engines and we're gonna start our engine start procedures ignition mode engine two starting And once we hit 22-ish percent, I'm going to go ahead and start engine one. Looks good. Engine one starting. Positive start, engine one, gonna switch back to normal. APU bleed off, ground spoilers armed, flaps set for takeoff. Pitch trim down 0 0.3. Engine anti-ice as required, APU master off. Alright, let's go ahead and All right, that gets our block time running. Nose wheel light set to taxi. Parking brake off, elapsed time run. Brake check, pull left, pull right, pull up, pull down. Flight controls checked, FMA should be at nav and climb. Auto brake set max. Terrain on ND.
don't see fibrous. <laughs> Ever since Toad's in Deering Chaos and Erico's housewife. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> Where is your icon? That's a good question. Which icon? No capes! I at least, I got that reference this time. You have to give me that. I got the reference. Alright. That is one thing that I will give this developer. He, he made these actually animated cranes. For the construction that's going on. I will absolutely give this developer that. <laughs> However, these these lights are are um, my dude, my dude. This is not appropriate. <laughs> oh, this is so confusing. There are just lights everywhere. You're talking about the greater good. It looks like he kind of drew in the lights, like by hand and then just drew a line. Like, he was actually trying to follow the taxiways at first, then he just said, fuck it, and just put a straight line. It's kind of what it looks like. But, I mean, there's a lot of things that I would improve here. I love these cranes. Your sub-mod gifter icon. Your mod icon is there, your... Your gift leader is there. Yeah, I don't know. I, I see I see them on all your posts. I don't know what happened. I mean, I took it away from you intentionally. <laughs> I am a little sad that it doesn't actually show um, any of any of the actual like subscriber icons for you guys like the loyalty I the loyalty badges you guys should all have loyalty badges yeah i can't look at discord while i'm flying or i'm not flying yet but while i'm controlling the aircraft i've got one i've got my my phone is controlling my stream i've got my tablet has my chat my monitor has my flight plan and my checklist uh then obviously the game monitor has the the uh, flying the, the 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 simulator itself. Name was in red with no caps. It sounds like it didn't recognize your subscription for a minute there. You want to look at this real quick because, like. Uh, yeah, I'm not on an actual taxiway. I'm still on the apron. O? What's the O? Speaking of O, slow down a bit because I'm going to turn here. I was talking with the National Safety Coordinator for American Airlines for about an hour today. Oh, that's cool. Was that, like, related to work or... just like happen to know somebody that works for American Airlines? Yeah, it work. Okay. Fair enough. Looks like we do have a little bit of weather, but thankfully we're taking off with it to our back, not to our front. Okay, let's go ahead and do our cabin calls. We're gonna do our takeoff config tests. Ecam no blue. That means we're crossing the outer marker. It's gonna be a little, uh, a little weird. Yeah, no more deep. No, I, I totally get it. <laughs> I just didn't know if it was related to work or if you happen to know somebody who worked for American Airlines. Like, that would be 
big news for me and for the stream. talked about me <laughs> well I'm glad to know that I came to mind all right let's get lined up on the runway before takeoff checklist transponder to TARA brake temp will be fine engine mode as required runway turn off lights on Landing lights on. Nose wheel lights to take off. All right, let's get her stopped here on the runway. Ooh. All right, chrono start, engines to 50%. Stabilized and release. Flex set. Nose wheel down. We hit 80 knots. Gradually release to 100. One rotate. Positive rate, gear up. down a bit. Climb. Nose down. Get a little speed. Let's disable these speed brakes. Runway turnoffs and nose wheel lights off. Speed checked, flaps one. All right, speed checked, flaps zero. All right, that's flaps retracted. Front boilers disarmed, nose wheel lights, when we turn off lights off, AP one. Be turned on whenever we so choose, but we're not going to choose quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and hand fly this just a little bit longer. I think trans altitude's about 5,000 feet here. really like is to get the new Thrustmaster TCA to replace my stick because it's an actual one-to-one -one replica of an actual Airbus side stick. Man, that would be that would be awesome to have. Apparently the, the increased size and robustness kind of helps with control as well.
is an interesting little loop. I'm not sure why they threw this in in the procedure. Maybe it's a noise abatement thing to get you a little higher. I hear better also stream is titled Trials of Mana. It shouldn't be. Looks like we're through our trans out, so I'm going to set standard barometric pressure. It did not save. I'm going to turn on autopilot. actually changed that before the uh, thing, before the stream started, but here we are. All right, we're through 10,000 feet. I'm going to turn off the landing lights. Uh, FCU altitude set to cruise and altimeter set standard. We've already done all that. Looks like we're good. You can go ahead and refresh it now and it should look good. Um, So, um, we are on our way now to Hong Kong. It's going to take us about, I want to say about an hour and a half or so. And that should get us to where we're going. Let me take a look here. It looks like we've got about an hour and seven minutes. So, yeah, probably close to an hour and 20, hour 30 from this point. So, it'll probably be about 7 p.m. Central Time, GMT minus 6. Or my, minus five, pardon me. Uh, all right, now let's zoom out a little bit, make sure we have something useful on our radar. All right, let's turn off our terrain, turn our weather radar. System one. <clears throat> Fixed, perfect. Thank you so, so much for letting me know about that. I do appreciate it. And uh, as always, you will be paid in the customary uh, gummies and pictures. By the way, uh, have those shown up yet? Hello, Sam6677112. I'm just going to call you Sam11 because 11 is in there and it will make my roommate very, very happy. So how are you doing today, Sam? Today we are flying from Hanoi in uh, Vietnam to Hong Kong International in the Tolis A319. We just departed a few minutes ago. Well, thank you so much, Samantha. Nice to meet you. My name is Sean. I, I don't really make a big deal about my name, uh, but I go by a rack attack. <laughs> yes, flying the saltiest of skies. We do have our own livery. Uh, let's take a look at that. Probably gonna be better on the side with the sun, huh? Air rack attack, fly the salty skies. Um, we made this ourselves. This is spelled Sha no, it's spelled S H A U N. I'm I'm a weirdo, I know, um, but I, I don't really know where it comes from. It's it's probably Irish, even though I don't have a whole lot of Irish in me. <clears throat> but I do know that uh, the S E A N comes from Gaelic. I think I'm not Irish. I'm I'm Irish by marriage. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call it Irish by marriage. Mostly I'm Polish, actually. If I can be said to be mostly anything. So, um, our cruise flight level today is going to be 37,000 feet. 
I'm used to it being spell shaman. Me too. <laughs> you know, you would think being a shaman that spells S H A U N, most of the time I would encounter it being spelled S H A U N. No. More often than not, all I ever see is S C A N. You're cru cruising in flights, and where are you going? Um, and what are you flying in? I'm very interested. And and do you fly on any networks? Uh, I, as a streamer, I can't really justify going on VATSIM. There's just no consequences to people doing horrible things, as they've been known to do to, tr to streamers. I am anxiously awaiting PauseCon getting uh, ATC working. I know they have a... Uh, you're flying Dublin to Auckland. Wow, that is a hell of a flight. That's got to be... What? 14 hours? 12 hours? Because you're talking about Auckland in New Zealand, right? We actually flew Auckland to, to Christchurch last week in Sim. Uh, actually, I think we did Auckland to Christchurch and back. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But, um, it's a 24 hour flight. Are you pausing? So, I have to ask this because I don't, I don't do a lot of really long hauls yet. I do plan on doing some long hauls here and there just for my own benefit. But when you fly a 24 hour flight, do you just turn on the flight, the, the, the uh, autopilot and go to bed? Or do you. Uh, do you pause the simulator? How do you how do you do that? Search results one day four hours duration four stops Dublin Ireland Auckland New Zealand Yeah, so that that would be that would be 28 hours I look it depend it, it'll depend obviously on tremendously on weather with that long of a flight um you're doing no stops, right, right. I'm just, so, so you're just staying up for 24 hours and flying it? You're not taking any breaks? I mean, I'm just... I'm not trying to judge. I'm just legitimately curious. And the thing that I want to... I, I want to remind people... Um is that especially in like when we're in simulator like i'm sure sam knows there's a lot of things we do that aren't the same way procedures work in real life you depart at two in the morning and take off reach about twenty thousand feet and go to sleep and wake up at a normal time yeah yeah fair enough so there's a lot of things that we do in simulator that we don't do in real life like I, 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 should, I shouldn't say we don't do, because I'm not a real-world pilot, but obviously even transatlantic, transcontinental flights, you don't leave the plane in the hands of the autopilot, ever. On a, on a transcontinental flight like that, you'd probably have three uh, a flight crew of three, and then you go to, go to sleep at about seven or eight at night, and then wake up at midnight to land. Yeah, yeah. See... In, in in the real world, you'd probably have a, a flight crew of three to handle a flight like that. But here in Simulator, we, we take some liberties. Uh, because we can't run our lives around simulation. Unless you're, you're blessed enough to be able to actually like make a living off of streaming it. Or something like that. Then, then you can absolutely do that and live your life around it. And actually get together some people to come up. That would actually be fun sometime, like, to, to set up an actual cockpit. Thursday you have a, a what? An even longer flight. How long? The planet's only so big. <laughs> See, I, I like to do these, like, two, three hour hops. You know, they're not really long flights. I will someday have to do a transatlantic. I'll have to do, you know, New York to heaven. I'll have to do it. Oh, you're flying custom-built plane. 
is it is it based on a real world plane or is it uh, just totally experiment? You threw it together. I've got a, a friend of mine that that comes by the stream sometimes. That she also makes custom built planes. Um, mostly she did it for um, for FSX. It's based on the A350-900. Nice, okay. I've never actually flown the A350. That's that's one of the, the wide bodies, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Double extra long range. I like it. I like it. Um, did you change the, the flight dynamics, or is it just more uh, a bigger fuel tank? I would think you'd get... No, no, that'd be fine. Yeah, extra, extra long range. When you gotta get something, a whole lot of something, to a somewhere a whole long ways away, the A350-900 extra, extra long. <laughs> I, I, I would imagine with something like that, you gotta be glad Airbus makes their uh, landing gear so tall. Unlike the uh, Boeings. Boeing makes their aircraft really low to the ground. And that would make it a nightmare to take off in something like that. Because you would you would probably wind up with a tail spray. 15 fuel tanks! Wow! Okay. Okay. I can I can understand that 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 would definitely do it. Um, the the I would imagine the the pumps on it would be uh, crazy. Like just the fuel lines running everywhere. Full, full capacity of three hundred tons. What's its maximum? What's its maximum takeoff weight? I mean, you couldn't fly something like that short range. If you did, you'd, you'd bust your your uh, maximum landing weight really fast. An Airbus generally doesn't have a way to fuel dump. You just have to circle or load up super light. I'm gonna take off is is five twelve. Nice. That'd be fun to fly sometime. But you'd have to have a long flight. You couldn't do a short flight. And I'm sure you, you, do you, when you do that, you mentioned going to 20,000 and then uh, going to sleep. You do a step climb later on. Flight ceiling is 490. That point, you're you're scraping the stratosphere, aren't you? Man, you gotta fly like a bat out of hell up there. I mean, I think the flight ceiling on this is what, 39.5? On the A319? Let's go look at my. I've got some stats on it here. That yeah, service ceiling's 39.5. Mach 0.82. That is absolutely insane. 24,000 miles. Yeah, I wish I could do stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Today, just today, I was trying to learn how to manipulate uh, scenery because um, the scenery in Hanoi that I got has a lot of issues that I wish I would have been able to get. I believe is enough to circle the Earth. I mean, let's find out. Just about. It's 25,000 miles. So you come up about 900 miles short. But that's if you're doing it at the equator. If you're doing it anywhere else, 
to be able to circle you be able to circumnavigate the globe. No problem. That is insane. That's true, that's true. Oh no, you're right, you're right, okay. Um twenty-one thousand six hundred and thirty-nine. So even at the uh even at the equator, you'd have an extra three hundred miles. You're absolutely right. Man, that is crazy. I mean, naturally, there's no reason for such a plane to exist. Right? You don't need a plane that can go any more than half of the, the circumference of the Earth, but it's fun to have and it's fun to fly. Kind of the same way, you don't need a plane that has no engines, but it's fun to fi fly a glider. The question is, how long would it take to circle the Earth in one go? That is an excellent question. And I think it depends on which way you go. Because you're going to want to fly with a tailwind. Um, I mean, I'm sure you can figure it out. But I'd need to know what its, its maximum speed is. Maximum ground speed. We can figure it out, or you can just do it. feet is roughly uh, 573.6 knots of ground speed. you arrive at 45? I mean, it sounds about right. Here's how you arrive. You can do Sydney to Sydney. Oh yeah, Sydney to Sydney would be pretty easy, actually. I mean, it's not. But the tough part would be to do something like Ecuador. That would be where you'd really find out, because then you're flying the equator. Now, when you do that, are you talking about flying straight east-west? Or, you know, like, like set the heading? Oh, you gotta go? Alright, well, take care. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, hopefully you've had a little bit of fun. I definitely have been very interested in the in the plane you've been talking about. So, uh, I hope you drop by again. Thank you so much for dropping by. Have a good night, Sam. <clears throat> and I appreciate that follow. I appreciate it so, so much. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to come back. We do this every week. <laughs> Once again, thank you for, for choosing Air Rack Attack.
All right, so we're through 10,000 feet. We're actually at cruise. I'm going to let the, the people walk about the cabin. I've completely forgot about that because I'm sitting here thinking about this extra, extra long range plane that can fly the entire world. That'd be fantastic. Oh, I wonder how, oh, I'm, I'm curious how, what its fuel rate is. <clears throat> so we can determine how, how long it can fly. Not necessarily how far, but how long. That'd be really cool. Have a, have a uh, plane that could actually, you know, chase the sun and chase the sun, fly for two or three days and just land, refuel, and just take off again. I mean, it'd be, it'd be tremendously expensive. Couldn't do it for long. It'd be fun to do. Flight plan. We're about halfway through the flight. Well, I don't know if we're halfway through the flight. No, we're about a third of the way through the flight. We're about halfway through the stream. I'm going to take a quick, like, five-minute break. Grab some water. I'll be right back. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. I'm going to leave you with this nice little cinematic view. And I will see you very shortly.
All right, and I'm back. I think I might be a little bit early, but uh, I don't care. I just had a few things to look at while uh, we're still on break. Everything looks good right now. Let's take a look. Where are we? We are just short of Vapna. And if we look at our light plan... So Vapna next will be Osika of like Gaoyo, Tingjo, Idos, Yanshingwe, and Gans. I don't know how to actually speak Chinese, but I have no idea how these are actually pronounced. Fourteen three to Sierra, which is just Sierra. Then top of descent down to Borda, Roca, Kanto, Murray, Goody, Monty, Hung Lung. All right. If we wanted to see a map, actually, I think I can throw up a map. What? <laughs> Pardon me. There we go. You can actually see on a map where we are. Or pardon me. There we go. There is the map. You guys are interested in seeing where we are? No. That looks a little bit different on my VOR map. And this is a little threatening to have so close. Lurking, how dare you lurk? No, I'm kidding, we, we, we encourage lurking. Lurking is fine. We can turn off that map and I can actually look right over here. I have a different moving map. Now, of course, all the uh, identifiers here on this map... Okay, there it is. Those are all going to be in Chinese. Except for Hong Kong, which is where we're going, luckily. It's Macau, Hong Kong. Where we're actually landing is, I think, right in here. Where, where is it? Is it down here? It's an absolutely stunning approach. I know the coolest thing about it is that the, the airport is basically like out in the water on a man-made island. There we are. I think that's it. Thought I had it. I mean, <laughs> Actually, you know what? We don't need this. 
Where did we come from? I'm gonna be honest, I am terrible at geography. I have no idea where exactly we came from. And then I'm gonna go ahead and transition this to take away that map. And we are back to full screen with the simulator. I gotta say, I appreciate what Tolis has made here. This is a fantastic machine. There are some things that I wish they would fix. Uh, these switches should all be uh, scroll wheelable. So right now I have to cycle the uh, emergency exit lights on in order to turn them off. Because I can't just instruct it to switch down to the off position. I have to toggle it one up, one down, right? Or at the very least, allow me to right-click to, to switch down. So it's left to switch up and right to switch down. You know, give me something to where I can individually s select, you know, which direction to toggle these. Um, one of the things that drives me absolutely bonkers, right, is... Um, so they actually have a manual that comes... They have three manuals that come with the airplane. There are a lot of spelling here. Uh, spelling and, and just referencing things incorrectly. Um, for instance, this here is my MFD, my, my PFD and my FMA, right? This is the FMA, the, the, the flight management enunciator, I think. And this here is the PFD, the primary flight display. However, they they tell me to look for status messages sometimes on the PFD and sometimes on the FMA. Which confuses me because I wind up looking for my enunciator to tell me things, but I'm looking for it down here. And, I mean, I don't really need that anymore. I know what everything on this aircraft does now. Um... I do wish that this would start locked, but that's okay. I really should put that into my procedures. That after we load the passengers, we lock the door. But, we shouldn't be too long now. We've been flying for, oh, about 40 minutes. Just shy. And we've been 46 minutes, so we had a seven minute taxi. Which is not bad at all. Our estimated time en route is about 33 minutes. Now, it's gonna be a bit more than that. We're probably going to arrive, I'd say, maybe midnight UTC. Maybe 55. Five tell. Now, this is actually a real-time flight. And this is a real-life flight, by the way. Um, I think this is Hong Kong Airlines... Yes, 294. I think HDA is Hong Kong Airlines, but I'm not entirely sure. Yes, Hong Kong Dragon Airlines. We are flying uh, Hong Kong Dragon Airlines Flight 294 with service from Hanoi to Hong Kong International. 
Now we just have a nice long cruise to Os Osaka. Osaka. Now hopefully today we, we, we will have a nice smooth landing. I did halfway decent last night. Or not last night, not before. Uh, let me find out uh, what was my landing marks. Negative 188.06 with 1.04 G's when we land. That's not bad. Um nose ring. I would call that a success for me. At least as of lately. I do need to put a lot of this into my spreadsheet. I do have a spreadsheet that tracks all of my landings. But I have been really bad about not putting anything in it for a while. Go ahead and look outside. And look at some of this stunning scene. All these mountains and cities, fields. Believe it or not, this is not ortho, but it does look fantastic. Thank you to x for actually making something look halfway decent for once. I did say halfway decent, don't quote me. <laughs> No, this is absolutely gorgeous. I love this sector so, so much. Also, because it's got very easy takeoffs and landings, the procedures are very simple. Um, as opposed to uh, Hong Kong's old airport, Kai Tak. Kai Tak was a little different, and I still haven't tried that meme yet. Mostly because the only way I know to get there doesn't have navigation. So, uh, I, I can't try a real world approach to hide that. Um, and it's a very, very precise procedure that involves flying very close to buildings. And it makes me super nervous to even try. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I do want to for the memes, but I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to fuck it up. And I'm gonna fuck it up. story short, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I hope you're glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. I'm very glad that you're all here. And that I hope you're enjoying. Let me know if there's anything you want me to do, whether it's to fly somewhere, from somewhere, um, if you want me to teach you something about the plane or the simulator, uh, if you want some advice on streaming, um, obviously, I, I don't know everything, but understand that I am just getting started, and that because of that, my numbers don't look as good as they actually are. Um, I've been doing this for about, I want to say a year now. Uh, maybe Lightly old. And the, the most important thing to remember when streaming is that the more you have, the faster you'll grow. The slowest you will ever grow 
is getting your first view. Because getting getting to the getting viewers is a balancing act, right? You want to be in a popular enough category that people are searching for it, but you want to be in a empty enough category that you can be near the top. Because you want people to come at you to see what you're doing, right? You want people to be able to find you. Once you get a few, then your numbers will help you stay higher up in the hopper so you can work into more and more popular games without having to worry about so much about being silenced by how low you are in the ranking. So don't like, don't come to Twitch and decide I'm going to start out my streams playing Fortnite and in a year I'm going to be the best streamer on Twitch. I'm going to be the next ninja. Because you're not. You're, you're going to have to put in a lot of work, a lot of effort. Streaming is a lot harder than people give, give, give streamers credit for. They act like we're just putting on a show, like, like we're just sitting here playing our game and that's all we're doing. Um, no. No, it's a lot harder than that. And, and I say this because I can say this. I'm small enough that I won't get you flat. Right? I'm not just whining and complaining about what I do. Not in the slightest. I do do this for enjoyment and to share the things that I love. Right? But what you have to understand is that for every hour I spend streaming, I spend at least a half an hour setting up. A lot of times more than that. Um, and that and that's just to set up. That's not that's not make, coming up with flight plans, making flight plans. That's not maintaining my Discord. Um, that's not looking into how to solve problems that I have. That's not looking into overlays. That's not generating graphics or videos or sound effects. That's not looking into new Twitch technologies that are coming out that we get to play with. Um, like, I still have to set up my stream points. That's something that's going to take me hours. And I have, I have no way to know how many hours it's going to take. And during that time, I am not monetized at all. Unless I decide to stream setting up my Twitch, right? Which I really don't want to do. It's not what I want to make my name with. Um, but so that's a lot of time that we spend making the experience better for you guys so that that two hours that we stream, that three hours that we go, that so that is as smooth and easy as possible and it, it runs entertaining. And all of that doesn't even account for the fact that while we are streaming, during times like this, I would be watching things on YouTube. Um, obviously, I would still be monitoring the aircraft, right? I'm not going to leave the aircraft totally unattended. Um, not unless I'm doing something dumb like a transatlantic flight. But... I wouldn't be sitting here talking constantly. I wouldn't be discussing the, the, the problems with the aircraft or with the scenery that we've got. I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be explaining how the aircraft functions or real-world procedures and techniques that I've learned and watched. I wouldn't be doing those things because I already know those things and I don't need to talk about those things. Being able to come up with those things matters a lot when you're streaming. Um, a whole lot. You have to be able to remain interested. And that's a lot of pressure that people don't realize how exhausting that is. To be able to always say something, to always talk, to always, to always have something interesting to say, try and capture people's attention, try and capture your imaginations and get you thinking, get you participating. You know, watching a stream is a passive thing, but being involved with the streamers community, that is an active thing. And that's what helps us. It doesn't, 
I don't want to say it doesn't matter if you show up. It definitely matters. But if you don't participate, right, it can get very, very hard on us to remember that you're there, to, to think about the fact that we, we may still be entertaining you even though you're not talking back. Right? And you guys can talk to each other too. That's another big thing that a lot of a lot of small to medium streamers tend to forget is that it's okay to let your, your community talk amongst themselves and to just kind of pick up on what's going on because you being here is what's cultivating that 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 group, that community that's what you're trying to build. And you're not going to build a community if you make all of the interaction on your channel go between your, your group and you. They won't get the feel of, of interacting with each other. Right? And that's what you want. You want a community of people that, that are tight-knit, that, that are good with each other as well as with you. And that's what I'm trying to build here. That's why also my Discord is not just for me. If you're also a streamer and you go on my Discord, you can self-assign yourself. There's, there's a bot. I wrote the bot. There's a bot where you can self-assign yourself the uh, streamer role. You can go into the stream announcement channel and you can announce when your stream's going live exactly like I do. I don't use any techniques or any, I, I don't lock anybody out from doing anything that I can do because that's not just my Discord. That is DFTTF. That is Discord for the totally fucked. If you guys want to jump in there, you can announce your streams too. Uh, just jump in, say hi to people. Um, I promise we don't bite hard, often. Wifey, stop laughing. Um, but that's a, that's a community that I'm trying to cultivate. Not not for me to lead it, right? I don't want be the focus of it, right? I'm making it for people. And I want everybody to be able to participate, everybody to be able to just drop in, do all the same shit as the rest of us, and just be, have fun and be cool with one another, you know? That's what I'm looking for. And unfortunately, everybody that I've seen, of course, they have a tool, therefore they have to use it. Um... So if they have an announcements channel where they can just force at everyone, everything, they're gonna do it. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm not saying it's a bad way to go. I'm saying it's just not my vibe, right? I don't want to act like I'm more important than anybody just because I started it. No, I'm just running it. That's the way I think of it. I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't, I'm not leading it. I'm just running it. You know, it's a, it's a community for you guys. So if you're interested in joining it, hit exclamation point Discord in chat and get that link. Actually, uh, it looks like the bot just threw it out there very helpfully. Thank you, bot. I'm very concerned that you might be listening in on what I'm saying. But, uh, but yeah. Um, I'm trying to make this for everyone. It's not just for me. It's for you guys. I want you guys to come in, have fun, talk with one another, talk with me. Um, just because I say I, I'm, I'm just running it, I'm not making it, and that doesn't mean that I'm not in there. I'm in there. I'm in there and you can talk to me all you want. Um, I accept DMs. I, I, I don't care. Maybe at some point in the future, I may have to do something like restricting DMs and stuff like that because if, if there just gets to be so many people and so much attention for my time... I don't want to to get to the point where it just gets toned out. But I'm always listening. I'm almost always checking my Discord. Um, I'm very, very Discord connected. So if you, if you guys have any questions, anything you want answered, any suggestions you have, any place you want to see us fly, let me know. If there's a if there's a um, an inexpensive game that. Uh, 
you'd like to see me play on stream that's in the kind of uh, vintage old school RPG genre or adventure RPGs like lately we've been playing uh, Trials of Mana drop that in there I'd be happy to, to go and stream something like that uh, if you have another suggestion just about how to lay out the stream or if there's anything that you you want to help with let me know I'm, I'm open to anything right I want you guys to be as involved in this stream as I am well obviously I'm going to be doing more of the work because I'm the streamer. It's my responsibility to make it good for you guys. But, you know, if there's anything that you want to do, please let me know. You know, don't don't sit there and say, oh, well, I wish he did this or that better. Tell me. I am, I am fine with hearing that I'm doing something wrong. Because finding out that we're doing something wrong is how we get to do it better. Ooh, we're getting close. What does Sim Toolkit say we are away? About 16 minutes. We'll probably have you on the ground here in about 30. But it looks like we will be done right around 7 o'clock. This is a perfect flight. I love this sector. Oh, come on. How perfect. How perfect is this? I've gotten to talk to you guys. We talked about this really cool uh, extra, extra long range plane. Uh, we calculated the circumference of the Earth. Um, we've learned a bit about the Taurus. We've learned a little bit about real life procedures. We've learned about streaming. We're doing fantastic work. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you are enjoying I hope you're having fun. I really do. So, we're going to be landing here in about 15, 20 minutes. Let's take a look. Where is our top of descent? It should be a little bit further. Yeah. I don't remember that. Okay. It's a lot, lot closer because we, we're doing this weird circling procedure, and I'm not sure why we do that. But it, it's probably some kind of a, a noise abatement because it, it takes us out over the water and has a circle into land. Not to be confused with a circle to land procedure, that's a totally different thing. sure everything is still set good. We're doing so well today. And we're going to see how close we get. I was saying, you'll see right down here, this is the time in UTC. I'm thinking we're going to get in at 23.55. Okay, I'm, I'm, putting it, I'm putting it down right now. 23.55, that's where we're going to land. Unless, of course, we have to go around. But if we have a go around, that's my fault. And uh, if it's my fault, then I just lose. I, I busted, I, I made a call, and I was wrong. Looks like so far our block time is about an hour and seven minutes, which means we should have been in the air about an hour. Yep. Look outside at this. This is absolutely gorgeous. It almost looks like um, Laminar decided to put some extra love into this region. It does look a little more realistic than other regions that I've flown over. Like, I've flown over the Midwest in the United States, and it looks nothing like flying over the Midwest in the United States. Absolutely nothing like that. Just 
looking. Now, if the Airbus wasn't as smart as it is about descent and constraints, I would definitely be looking at a sector chart and making sure that we're descending properly. However, the Airbus is really good about following constraints. So I'm not going to worry about it once we get to the point of top of descent. I'm just going to descend us down to like 2,000. <clears throat> and then the, uh, the Airbus will automatically stop and level off at constraint levels and then continue once they're ready to descend. So that's how I'm going to do it. <coughs> Unfortunately, I just did not have the time to prepare today to have sector charts and everything. Which sounds weird because, like I said, I did, in fact, uh, fly this flight yesterday. Maybe the day before. But uh, then I was flying it mostly just to make sure that the source and destination, the, the, the departure and arrival airports, all the, the, everything worked. That's what I was looking for. And that's something I'm still looking for, apparently. My brain, my mouth, not doing so good on, on me working. Also, if anybody wants a fun fact, um, <laughs> fun fact about the stream, the audio player that I use to play all of my stream sounds, all, all my music, it has not been in development in something like 10 or 15 years. It is an absolutely ancient program called Sonic. It was developed by Lycos. If any of you even remember Lycos, um, one of the one of the old big uh, search engines, Lycos was. I think their their uh, their whole thing was that their mascot was a dog, and instead of saying search, it said fetch it or something like that. It was it, it, it's crazy to me. That they have been dead for so long. I don't, at least I think it's dead. I don't know. Maybe it was just bought out by somebody. I, I don't know. Probably. But they developed this, this media player and I still use it because I was able to find it uh, on an archive site. And, and it just works. It just works so well. It looks fantastic. It's a very lightweight footprint because, of course, it was developed at a time where we didn't have the capability to, to do things like we do now. You know, um, now all your media players are so over, overgrown, bloated, because they can't. Right? So they use more and more sophisticated techniques, they try to do more and more things, track more and more things, and everything that it's doing, of course, costs you, you know, CPU use. You know, the, the CVUs that were using a hundredth of them didn't even exist when this program was last updated. So it's super, super lightweight, and it just, it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> so I just wanted to throw that out there. It can be found, uh, so just, just search for Sony S O N I Q U. It's a fantastic player. Uh, it's about as old as Winamp, maybe even older. Of course, Winamp, another uh, media player that went out of development. But I think a lot more people are familiar with Winamp than they are Sony. I'm going to be clear about that. Also, all the uh, music that we play is off of the Voices of the Livestream soundtrack. 
Sounds like me running photo impact still. You can hit problems with minute memory usage between 32 and 64 bit. I mean, you can, but for something like this that really doesn't use a lot of memory, it's not a big deal. Actually, this may even have 16 bit. No, if it was 16 bit, it couldn't even run. Not on mine. <laughs> Voices of the live stream! Yes, that is absolutely what I mean. No, uh, Voices of the live stream, a Final Fantasy VII Remix uh, CD set um, done by OC Remix. You can find those on ocremix.org. And also, they have a YouTube channel that has absolutely all their content. It is all um, fair use. It is all. Uh, pardon me. Not fair use, because that implies that it's copyright. It is all royalty-free, is the correct phrase for me to use. It is all royalty-free. You can use it anywhere, on anything. No big deal. Nothing to worry about. And I love, 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 love their music. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dial us down. I'm not going to click it yet. I'm going to dial us down to about 3,000 feet. Enter destination data. Cool. Alright, so we have once. Meta. This is Hong Kong INTL there Information X ray. 2338 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 29. Dew point 26. Line 60 at 4. Altimeter 1010. Advise you have information X ray. End of information X ray. Oh, and it's going to do this again. Please don't. <laughs> Apparently, this is their real world. Um... This is their real world the ATIS frequency, or at least close enough that uh, X Plane is deciding to send me their ATIS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to. Oh, we're off. Wait, wait, wait. What did I turn off? Okay, that's the that's the outer marker. Thank you. And it won't let me turn on the ILS. I'm not going to worry about the outer marker. Because otherwise it's going to scream at me for a little bit while we're landing. I do not want to deal with it screaming at me while we're landing. That is much older technology that we don't have to worry about anymore. It looks like we're going to be landing somewhere right over here. hard to see because I can't see through my aircraft, but this should be somewhere in this area. It is definitely on the north end of the island. We may be too far out for it. You may not be able to see the draw distance. Hmm. 
Ooh, recognize this track. I've got this one in various playlists. You do? This is, I think, Coral Prison? I want to say? actually pop this up. Possibly I've got a smattering of OC Remix stuff in my library, but I haven't looked for new stuff for a while. This is definitely not new stuff. See, this is a life without parole, desert wasteland. This is, this is a really pretty song. What I don't like about it is that it has no energy right now. <laughs> see if we can't grab our Descent Winds. We can. Fantastic. And it's been a good day. The plane is be behaving very nicely. It is a bit. I'm going to go ahead and skip it for now. Oh, and this is going to be a good one, too. This is Airships Makes Me Happy. Which is funny, because we're flying a modern-day airship. And when we're about 15 nautical miles... Well, I guess we're going to do it now. Go ahead and start our descent. All right, landing elevation is set to auto. Make you arrivals and performance approach has been done. Top of descent winds is done. FCU altitude set and push has been done. Speed brake half as required, not required, shouldn't be required at all. Uh, we'll be setting our altimeter to 1010 as soon as we cross 10,000 feet. And whatever the transition altitude is here, I'm going to look at that real quick. Trans altitude is 9,000 feet, technically 930. 9,030 feet. And that's where we're going to go to 1010. I'm going to go ahead and change the standby compass. The standby uh, ESI. I absolutely love when this song comes up when, when I'm flying. I, I can't describe just the, the pure joy of having this show up also I apologize for the squeaks that's me opening my vacuum bottle for my drink my water it it, it requires being cold I can't drink warm water Also, one thing I would like to ask, and this is just me screaming into the void, but can we please yell at MGM and tell them that legitimately we want more Stargate? And stop dicking around with Stargate. Stop trying to just, you know, capitalize on the Stargate you've already made. Make more Stargate. There's two ways you can go. You can go with a new Stargate, which I'm not sure exactly how it'd be done. I have some ideas. Or the other direction you could go, finish Stargate Universe, okay? You were finally hitting a stride with it when you guys quit with it. So you can continue on with Stargate Universe after the time skip. Um, but, ah, oh, just 
something. Give me, give me something. Stargate is such a good series, and you guys hocked it up with the Ori. You abandoned the Atlantis, or rather, you brought Atlantis back to Earth. That's ooh, spoilers, by the way. Bringing Atlantis back to Earth, man, that was that was a rough call. But that hard line ends that that particular line of thinking. I mean, but I feel like I feel like this is a time when we could make a legitimate Stargate, make a real good Stargate. Um, you know, a passing the torch Stargate. While we still can, I think I, I think Michael Shanks and Richard Dean Anders. I, I think they're all still good to, to, to make something and just do a passing of the torch. Um, I'm not sure if you could get... I can't even remember his name. <laughs> took over SG-1. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I did not like the new guy. Dean Anderson isn't quite recognizable last I saw him. Uh, yeah, but see, you can you can you can fudge a little bit with Richard Dean Anderson. Yeah, Ben Browder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can get him or not. But uh, Richard Dean Anderson. The important thing about Richard Dean Anderson is not how he looks, because remember, he's had his brain uploaded to places. He's you know, he's, he's, he's had his body transfigured multiple times. Like, you've seen a lot with Richard Dean Anderson as Jack O'Neill. It would not be difficult or unreasonable to do a Farscape crossover. They could do a Farscape crossover. That's the beauty of it. They can cross over with anything. You know, all they gotta do is just say it's a different world. It fits with so many, so many worlds, but they keep dicking around with it and just not doing anything. They did on the 200th? I know they did some shit with, I think it was the 300th? I don't remember. Um, I'm in the middle of watching it all again. I'm in season two. For wormhole extreme. <laughs> no, no, the best, the best episode. Oh, I can't remember what it's, what the name of it is, and my line is going to kill me for that. But uh, it's the one. Oh god, I almost had it for a second. Oh, my wife's gonna kill me. Um, window of opportunity. Yep, that's it. That's it. That is the best episode. Any Stargate main now would be a PC pandering SJW nightmare. With an orange present, alien immigrants with good storyline and a villain who's just some politician. Like, I mean, we don't. I mean, look. I don't want to bring. I don't want to bring politics into it. You know, um, and it already had a bit of a political overtone, like everything does. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would like for it to, to try and be just itself. Like, not, not done in context of today's world, but in, in context of what we wish today's world was. That's what I would like to see. Like we gotta be at 15,000 at Murray. Yeah, I don't, like, yes, I know, like, Star Trek. Star Trek always was topical. It just kinda hid it underneath all the metaphor, right? But, because I loved what I grew up with being Star Trek, I would want 
Yeah, yeah, I would love to see. That is an excellent way to put it. Oh my god. You have so many good ways of putting things that I wish I knew how to say. Making timeless stories, not relevant stories. Yes, yes, that exactly. Why are you yelling at me about... Okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do that plane. Even though the transition altitude is like... 9,300 feet, which is another 6,000, 7,000 feet down. Let me actually, uh, that's from, I think, Midnight's Edge. I have no idea what that is. Um, man, that is a good way to put it. I absolutely love that. Oh. Oh, that was perfect. That's just it, though. The atmosphere of media is such that it cannot be anything other than propaganda. I wish they did it right. I wish they made it poignant, stimulating stories, but they won't. I mean, there's only two ways it'll go, right? Because, again, I, I, I don't want to... At the risk of politicizing things, which I don't want to do. I, I don't want to politicize it. Because it's, it's rampant, it's everywhere. But that's kind of the point, right? The only way that they can make this is either as a political advocacy for what's going on or against it. It could never be anything else. When commenting about what made Star Trek and Star Wars so good originally, they weren't time-gated content. I mean, he's a commentary channel on YouTube. Oh, okay. Midnight Set. Okay, it's a commentary channel on YouTube. I gotcha. Okay. Look a little bit more at my procedure. We are really hecking close, guys. Looks like we're gonna bust my time. Uh, I said we'd be down 655. Uh, 2355 UTC, and we are definitely not going to hit that. We might be down by midnight UTC. But yeah. I would love to see timeless stories be told. I would love to see a return to just being able to tell a story. Just tell a story. It doesn't have to be a great story. Just tell a story. It doesn't have to be relevant. It doesn't have to be poignant. It doesn't have to. Doesn't have to talk about. Like, think about it. Like, like comedy, right? Comedy is all built on common experience. It's things that we all see. We all do. And we all can kind of laugh at it when we're looking at it from the outside when it's not us doing it right now in the moment. But, you know, like falling down the stairs, it is absolutely fucking terrifying. As a fat man, because I am a fat man. Let me just, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the, the, the silence here. I'm a fat man, okay? I don't care. Look, if I fall down the stairs, that's like a heart attack. I am, I am terrified of stairs, okay? Because one bad fall down the, down the stairs... And my life's over, because I can't walk anymore, right? Right? Gravity is a fat man's arch nemesis. We'll never be any different. Um, so that's the thing, like, gravity is my nemesis, so stairs scare the shit out of me. Um, and I forget where I was going with that, but... Um, well, I, I totally lost where I was going. That's how bad, that's how bad stairs scare me. Totally forgot where I was going with it. Oh, shared experience, right. Comedy. Comedy is not relevant to what's going on, it's relevant to our common experience. So, if I fall down the stairs, that is terrifying. If I watch my roommate fall down the stairs, I will also die laughing. Right? Because it's a common experience. We all have done it. We've all fallen down the stairs at some point. 
And it's hilarious that we walk up and down hundreds of thousands of stairs in our lives. Except for those six. Or ten, or however many we miss and fall down the stairs. For no fucking reason. Our bodies know exactly how to get up and down stairs. Somehow, just fuck it up. We just fuck it up for no reason, right? So we laugh at that because it's something that we've all shared. It's something we've all done, and it makes no sense, right? It's it's the subversion of expectations. You expect that after 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 stairs, our, our legs know what to do. We know how to manipulate stairs. I'm 30 fucking years, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 30 something years old. I'm not 30 exactly, but I'm in my 30s. I should know how to manipulate stairs, and I do, but sometimes my body just spazzes out and down I go, you know? It doesn't happen often, but it happens sometimes, and that's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious when I'm not doing it right now, right? So that's something that doesn't, it doesn't have to be relevant to what's going on right now. I don't have to have just fallen down the stairs to laugh at falling down the stairs. Yeah, more hilarious when it's not you. More hilarious when you know that you're fine because you've already gotten over it. You've already, you're already fine. You're already done. <sighs> but, you know, stories like that, stories like that are better. You know, because it, it doesn't matter. You can watch those in 10 years, you can watch them in 50 years, they'll still be relevant. But, like, you can't watch a lot of recent shows in 20 or 30 years because society will be in a different place and the jokes won't make sense. And, and the content, the context won't be there anymore. So you're planning to make dead content. Alright, speed break half, Alton Rear, landing lights. Landing lights need to come on. I've been totally neglecting my responsibilities as the pilot. Indy data to constraints, that's good. FCU LS. Turn on our landing systems. You know what's so shocking about that? No, I don't know what's so shocking about that. What is so shocking about that? Okay, FCU speed, manage mode. Break as required, not required. Flaps one will be at 230 knots. You can still go back and watch people like Bob Hope and Johnny Carson, and they're still funny. And they're still funny because they're talking about things that are universal. Right, but that's because, yes, it was topical humor at the time, but it's still funny because they, they, they couched it in universal terms, things that we all have experience with. <clears throat> Pardon me. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I should probably save some gas for tomorrow. Alright, as soon as we hit 230 knots at this D-cell. Not to be confused with an incel. I just find hilarious. Why do we have to keep making up stupid names to call things? Anyway. Oh no, we're gonna go through the cloud! Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on these. Should be tuning in any time now. Hear something? Okay, when are we gonna do so? Two more seconds.
All right, here we go. All right, LS is tuned. I'm approach mode. Toward 30 knots, speed checked, flaps one. Go ahead and throw on that second autopilot. Right, flaps two will be at 200 feet, or 200 knots. feet. <laughs> if we're setting flaps to at 200 feet, <laughs> we're going around. Ordered not, speed checked, flaps to. Our next flap extension is at 185. Looks like we have captured the localizer, just about. There we go, capture localizer. Altitude, according to the glide slope, is armed, but not started. All right, flaps three, flaps full. So let's go ahead and gear down. Ground spoilers armed. Those will like the taxi runway turnoffs on. Hey, Lucas, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, I am on approach. Lights look captured, so I don't. I'm not going to be able to say much. This is a, just a very, very um, attention requiring portion of the flight. You're from Brazil. Well, thank you so much for coming and watching from Brazil. I appreciate it so, so much. You being here. Let's see, can we get a visual on the runway? Because these conditions are not the best. are captured totally on the glide slope and the localizer and we have a tailwind why are we landing with a tailwind you lied to me and it's only six knots we should be able to handle it you might float a little bit but we'll be fine something. Hopefully we'll break through this uh, fog and be able to see the ground. I really don't want to have to do an auto land. Just trying to understand the game. So many things to learn. It is a lot to learn. What I would suggest, I don't know what aircraft you have or what you're trying to uh, fly. Whether it's GA or like a tube liner like I am. Um... If you're flying the Tolis, the Tolis has a man manual with a lot of fantastic information in it, and it walks you through a tutorial flight. Okay, there we are. There's our runway. Okay, so we have visual on the runway. Right here. Perfect. So there is an awful lot here. Um... What I would suggest is bounce around, watch some streams, whether you're into GA or whether you're into uh, something like this, where you're flying airliners. Uh, but watch some streams relevant to what you're trying to do. Um, you can look, look up videos on YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of fantastic information from a, a channel called Cat Strader. C-A-T-S-T-R-A-T. TOR. OK, 
Okay, from about a thousand feet, I'm gonna take it manual. Alright, so we should be fully configured, ready for landing. Ah, almost. Turn on my low speed brakes. But yeah, I'm happy to help anytime except for when I'm on final approach. That's a very difficult time for me to help with anything. Thanks so much. I haven't played yet, just watching before I get started. That's an absolutely perfect way to do it. Because you don't want to overload yourself and then find out that you spent money on the simulator that you can't actually fly. Nose down. 80 knots, still reversers. Okay, that was not a good landing. Okay, 30 knots, manual braking. Turn off our landing lights. Wait, turn offs. Store speed brakes. Retract our flaps. You master on. Turn on MD off. Brake fan on if necessary. Let's turn off our weather radar. It'll probably heat up a little bit, so let's go ahead and turn on our brake fans. Any lights are retracted. Ground spoilers are disarmed. Engine mode is at normal. Flaps are retracted. AP master is on. AP start is on. Uh, terrain on ND is off. Brake fans are on. Perfect. But yeah, it is absolutely a joy to do, Lucas. If if you get into it, it is absolutely a joy. Um, I have flown a little bit of DA, but mostly just airliners. Have a lot of fun with it, um, and I hope that you do too. Um, if you're looking for GA, I'd probably look at maybe Flight Chops to kind of get an idea for it. Um, Patch Trader, Citation Max. But uh, tube liners, you'll be looking for like Captain Canada, myself. Um, a lot of really good streamers. Go ahead and 
turn into the A-frame here. That was a good time to get into it uh, since the market is heating up with new sim software. Yes, because Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 comes out in three weeks ish in a half it's counting so if i were you this is what i'd do this, honest to god this is what i'd do i would wait and see what happens uh august 18 because august 18 is when um microsoft flight sim 2020 is coming out and um, I would worry and be concerned that so if the if the aircraft that come with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 are study level like this if it is if it is like this then I would absolutely say to grab Flight Sim 2020 instead of X-Plane only because you get the 319 or the, the 320 the, the Airbus A320 and a bunch of GA craft along with the sim if it's not study level then I would still wait and see because I would want to know for sure what Microsoft has to offer before I just decide to take up uh, x -Plan. All right, and that's us pulled in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hong Kong. All right, let's look at our parking checklist. Park brake pressure check green, which that looks good. Uh, park brake on, anti-ice off, APU bleed on. Engine one and two master off. Runway turn off lights off, wing lights off. We need to stop our time here. One minute, 52 seconds block time. Uh, nose wheel lights off. Beacon off. Seat belts off. Fuel pumps all off. Uh, transponder to standby. McDo to dim. Yeah, it's definitely worth waiting for a review. That's, that's definitely what I would do and find out exactly what the aircraft they are including are. Um, I mean, I know what they all are. What I don't know is how much they're all worth. If they're not worth anything, then who cares? Um, then really all they're offering is live streaming ortho. Realistic. At which point I would stick with X-Plane 11 for the time. Alright, brake fans off. I'll go ahead and turn all right, securing the aircraft. Parking brake is on. Adiers turn off. Exterior lights all off. Uh, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit lights off. No smoking lights off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to Hong Kong International Airport. 
Um, our flight time today. Oh, I want a real quick 3460. I do want to record that. Scenery is supposed to be a huge selling point. Okay, so here's the thing. It comes with either 35, 40, or 45 uh, sceneries. Um, some of them are uh, very, very, very high traffic airports. That would probably be worth a lot of money if those are where you're flying. Uh, we're talking about like Hedro, Dulles, uh, Chicago Hair. LAX, Las Vegas. That is a huge st selling point. The uh, and and those are depending on which version you buy. Another big selling point. Why am I still functioning? What is still working? My batteries are off. My APU is off. My engines are off. What is giving me power? Plane. Plane, power, where, how, how do? There it goes, okay. <laughs> there was a lot of leftover power. I'm thinking entirely about the standard terrain. Okay, so you're talking about basically the streaming ortho. That is a fantastic thing. That is that is absolutely its selling point. That is what it's making its, its claim on. And, you know, honestly, that may be worth it. That may be worth it. Even to me. Right? If you have the internet for it. Even if you don't, you can uh, you can pre-download and cache stuff that you're not having to stream it all the time. <laughs> the game comes up dead discs. <laughs> don't say that. Don't believe that. Don't, don't believe that. Uh... <laughs> But no, um, I am excited to see what it can do. <laughs> you will get us in trouble. There goes our Microsoft sponsorship. Not that they were gonna sponsor a little stream like mine, but but no, I'm excited to see what it has in store. More importantly, and this is this is the thing, I don't care whether it's good or bad. Because either way, it's going to light a fire under X-Plane's ass. Laminar is going to have to step their game up in order to compete. Or just decide not to compete. And I know that they can't... They can't compete by keeping up, right? They, th there's no way. Uh, you know, t Laminar is a very small, small team. I don't know if you guys know that, but but Laminar is like six people. Right. X-Plane still has VR and MFS... Uh, I hate putting that S in there. And Microsoft Flight doesn't. That is a huge issue. That they are going to have to deal with. These markings have got to be too far forward. It's got to be too far forward. I should have stopped back here. Anyway, that or I'm just at the wrong area and this is supposed to be for, like, Boeings only. But anyway, let's go ahead and toggle replay mode. Run it back a little bit. Ooh, look at that. That is a tall fucking building. Anybody knows what that building is, please let me know. Let's kick it forward a little bit. Here we go. All right, let's look at it real time. We'll pause it here. Okay, so we're looking at looking from 218.49. And we're going to real quick go to the tower view. 
<gasps> it's an actual honest to god tower view? <gasps> Be still my beating heart. Well, we just recently landed. We're looking at some uh, replays just before we end the stream here. But um, we landed here in Hong Kong. Our landing rate was too high. Way too high. I think I was somewhere in the three or four hundreds. Somebody confirm for me. It was, it was way too high. But with all this fog, it was really, really difficult. I'll, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back doing flight sim next week on Tuesday. I do it every Tuesday. I will be doing uh, Legend or Trials of Mana tomorrow. About 400. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was not pretty. Like I can. No, nope, it's not going to show me right now. But I kind of let the descent get away from me, and then I over flared too early. I, I flared at 40 or 50 feet instead of at 30. Like you're, you're going to see me flare any second now. Here we go. Yeah, there's that early flare. And then I just deepened it and held it, and it made me just drop. So that was not good. Back that up again. 1945. Pause this. Switch to runway. Oh, this developer. I don't know who made this airport right off the top of my head, but... Oh, I love you so, so much. So I was definitely a little too far left. Yeah, you can see me flaring way too deep a flare way too early. And then I just drop. still in cruise. Well, you're going to be in cruise for a little bit. I mean, you are looking at like a, a day-long trip. Yeah, you got a long way to go. <laughs> and this is why I like these short hops, because this is the fun part, right? This is the part where we're we're just goofing around. We're, this is the part where we're actually doing something. In, in cruise, we're just cruising. Yeah, that was real thumpy. We smashed that good. Yeah, it's definitely a Ryanair landing. <laughs> oh, coming at me like that. Why you gotta do me like that? I mean, you're not wrong. But it's just mean to say. <laughs> I'm not terribly proud of this landing. <laughs> it's 48? Ah, uh, man, I feel... At that, at that rate, you can actually fail to deploy your, uh, your speed brakes. Not always, but it, it is possible. I think they, they recommend it being over 60 and under one, 160. At least for the 319, anyway. All right. So, thank you guys so much for being here. 
for for being with us today and for just enjoying this this dumb content of me flying planes badly and landing far far too hard um What's funny is I did this same landing two days ago, and I was at minus 188. So, I promise, that, that's not me blowing it out of proportion. I don't know why, I tend to land so much better and so much softer when I'm not streaming. I think it's just, just attention, right? Having more attention to focus on flying the plane, I wind up landing better. Today, honestly, we should have been coming at it the other direction. Um because we had a tailwind. Yeah, minus seven, I'm not entirely sure that we've hit the ground yet. If we could be totally stopped, I would I would probably have to pop open the, the cabin door just to check and make sure the ground is there. Um I I would I would be legitimately concerned as a as a as, as a passenger. Let it go again. Okay. Take care, Sam. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being here today. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow where we will be flying. Or we're, we're not going to be flying. We're going to be playing Trials of Mana. And then again on Friday, we will be back flying next week on Tuesday. I don't yet have a plan as to where exactly I'm going to go. Um... Maybe a redemption flight in Brazil. Because just, just two or three weeks ago, we, we did uh, Sao Paulo and Rio. We, we did a loop back and forth in Sao Paulo and Rio. And... Oh, I, I, I did so badly that I just want another chance to kick that approach of ass. Because that was, that was a fun approach. And I just... I broke it. Uh, that or we might do something like Innsbruck, if I can figure out the real world uh, procedures and get a hold of charts and everything, that might be fun. So anyway, thank you guys so much for being here, and I hope you guys have a fantastic evening, and a fantastic week if I don't see you tomorrow, and then uh, we'll see you again next week for more Flying Stupid Airplanes. Thank you guys so much and have a fantastic evening.